And now we are going to go into the chart reading portion of our stream and <laughs> who to, who best to demonstrate what a Manny Gen circuitry looks like than uh, Danny reading for himself. <laughs> and this is oh, the so sweet. Right. And this is the lovely little chart. So I'm going to do a little bit of what I can see. And then, of course, you can read yourself. Um, so what you can tell about Danny being a Manny Gen, of course, he has the defined sacral. But mm -hmm. also the fun part is you can see that his sacral has a channel. It's 15, 15, 5, and then 34, 10, and 34, 20. Yes. So are going to the throat. Yep. Oh, and oh that, yeah. Three, I was two, looking uh, at two that. Two channels. Yeah, two channels go to the throat. 10, Going 20, and 34, throat. 20. Yeah. And that's what makes a manifesting generator different than a pure generator. Yep. Correct? Direct connection, or... direct connection right to the throat. Yep. Exactly. Excellent. So you've got a manifesting generator. What do you notice about the open versus the closed centers versus the defined? Uh, yeah. So he has an completely open ego which is interesting so there's absolutely no filter so there is lots of room <laughs> for conditioning thinking lots of room i'm for not conditioning. Yep. yeah it's like oh i i'm not good enough or i'm not you know motivated enough right now to do this thing and there's a lot of that not self that can happen if um conditioning wasn't done around that center but if um you do realize your actual theme for a center is you're not here to prove anything. Not here to prove you're, anything. You're not yep. here to prove anything. You don't have that crazy ego willpower to get things done. That's not where your juice I comes to, from. I used to pretend I did. And then mm -hmm. I felt like shit when it wasn't true. And I had to. Oh, you can, you can fake the centers. Yikes. <laughs> yep. Yep. God, that does. That probably felt awful. It did feel awful. And I mean, I was for the longest time, I, I would just think I wasn't good enough with this Ooh, or that. Yep. Jesus. All right. Yeah. And then the other fun uh, center to look at is the solar plexus, right? So, mo so it's like about a 50 50 split of defined solar plexus versus undefined in the entire world population. So, 50 if, 50 split. Yep. So, if Danny is around someone like, let's say, myself, who has their solar plexus defined, he is basically taking on all of the wave's emotions. He's taking it on and he will feel it uh, much more oh. strongly than even I am because open centers and undefined centers, they amplify everything so it's that much stronger in them which uh i can't imagine being funny well and it also <laughs> wants to avoid the confrontation and there's one theme coming off of that uh solar plex it's unconscious gate six and uh, uh it's yeah. in a six line so it's gate six line six and it's 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 called the it's called the peacemaker um it it's it's trying literally to either make peace or fight war because the peacemaker is two things. The peacemaker is trying to make the peace, but the peacemaker is also a Colt forty-five. Mm -hmm. You know, the peacemaker is you know I got I got I got a cannon, I I got a nuclear bomb. So you know, so peace through strength. In other words, uh, uh, in but it's in an open center, so I don't know what strength is there. It's connected, and and I, there's an open ego in in my body graph. I don't know if I can prove that. You know, mm -hmm. and so so you put those things together, and it's like it doesn't feel good, but. It's, it was desperately trying to find the right intimacy. This was always my thing because that's the gate of intimacy. This is the gate of the pH of the body to, to be open or closed to which thing, intimately speaking. And mm -hmm. fourth, being a fourth line, you know, for a 2-4, I was always intimately in, uh, wanting to have lots of friends. Ah. Be, so that was an intimacy that I could or couldn't take on. And I'd be very nervous and, and, and not right with people that I weren't right with. And if there was emotional issues almost always surrounding, you know, like a girlfriend, for instance, if they were almost all emotional because that's where I would have been attracted. And mm -hmm. um, and then suddenly in that moment, once their emotions flared up because I wasn't doing what they wanted, for instance, or I wasn't what, you know, whatever, I was not what. For whatever reason, if their emotions, as their emotions moved, I would amplify that or I would avoid it and become a liar. Oh, no, no, it's all good. No, it's good. I'll get to that. I'm not getting to that. No, it's all OK. It's not OK. No, never mind. Not never mind. I should say something. 
Oh, I'll be back as soon as I can. No, I won't. I'm going to try and stay away as long as possible. I don't want to be there. All these things became little lies mm -hmm. that would show up in my life that I didn't feel good about. Mm -hmm. The That's other good. center that uh, <laughs> you like to talk about uh, is your undefined root. So mm -hmm. the undefined root can take on external pressures from either someone who has a defined root or just pressure outside of yourself and it does not feel good. It's like, ah, I got it. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I have like nowhere to go. Constantly in a hurry it? to be free of the pressure. It's an incredible um, joke to play on a man and a generator because I'm constantly responding to things. And if I can't move because um, I'm under pressure to try and get rid of other pressure, mm -hmm. it's my responder is starts to wear itself out doing what it's not doing, what's not satisfying. And, you know, talk about ulcers and shortening your lifespan and, and you know the not self is the entrance point for disease and sickness on the planet it's mm. it's there you know we don't yeah. we get we we get unhealthy through our not self first and then other systems start to break down become susceptible to other things and it's a slow boil and it's an insidiously slow process so you, it's hard to point at it while it's happening but you see it after when you're sick. right so the spleen is not my strong suit, but I will attempt spontaneousness. To, uh, when you define spleen, you are you, the spontaneity of your way is the spleen is a spontaneous event, just like a sacral, but it's truly mm, spontaneously well, aware. What, what aware. I was going to mention about the, the spleen actually is I was list, looking at it from the perspective of my son who has a completely open spleen and it's either they can again get very conditioned, think getting taking on the fears of all the things. It's like, you know, be cautious of this, be scared of that, and be very fearful. Or you can swing the other way and have like zero stranger danger. You forget you don't <laughs> Just, even know what to be fear of. Now I yeah, have a it, theme. I have a theme coming off of this. So but so you have that, a theme because you have your your um, 44. unconscious 44, yep. yes. It's also in the sixth line and it's called aloofness. It's asking you to basically withdraw before you make a decision on what to transmit to get that ego willpower to transmit a message. So it's a surrender to a type of withdrawal. It's aloofness. And so the spleen, my spleen, it goes along with my second line profile because my second line profile would like to be aloof sometimes. But um, with that, it's fear. It's got a fear. All the spleen gates, uh, all the gates of the of the very of the three awareness centers, come with a natural fear, a mm -hmm. fear that drives intelligence. Fears, fear drives intelligence, and we have mm -hmm. to know that. And mm -hmm. so, when it's a completely open spleen, you don't know what to fear, and so you can think that the your cape is going to hold you when you jump off the second story of your house, mm -hmm. and it's the stupidest thing ever because <laughs> you know, only Mary Poppins can float down on two umbrellas. You're gonna sink or like Batman, a rock. Or Batman, or Batman, with or all his gadgets. <laughs> yep, yep, and stuff like that. So you just you, you don't realize that it's not safe. The spleen is there to keep you safe. Now I have an open spleen, but with a theme. So there's always awareness of what is safe or not safe potentially, but I'm never sure of it. My spleen is not giving me moment to moment hits and awareness of what to be sure of. So I have to constantly navigate. Is that a thing? Is that not a thing? I don't know. Right. Because it's it's undefined, right? Because if undefined. it was defined, you would get that. I would have a more moment. more certainty over more sureness over that moment to moment. No, I'm safe. Um, like open spleen people, you know, as soon as they start to get a little sick, what is this? What is that? What is this? What is that? Mm -hmm. Defined spleen people more likely tend to 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 be like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, until they're wicked, freaking sick. Ah, that's you know, good to know. <laughs> open, open spleen people are are good are, are always trying to you know find little homeopathic remedies for this and that, and they're always ready to apply an ointment or have or or ingest a thing or to suck down a pack of vitamin c or something and the defined spleen person is like yeah i don't even care about that stuff and they just sort of yeah you just describe my hobby to a perfect t he has a defined spleen he's like yeah i don't need the ah, yeah, ah, 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 ah. right right and so, <laughs> oh, okay i didn't know that was a thing oh, we're getting we're totally yeah, and the not our self own this episodes danny we yeah. are supposed to go into the centers at some point let me just keep rolling around to your other centers <laughs> oh right yeah yeah yep. yeah right. so defined sacral defined sacral 
means you have consistent energy to do the things that you love. If right. it is a thing that you do not want to do, you are going to turn off. You, right, you're still right. going to have burnout. You're still going to lose energy to do it. But if you right. are doing the thing you actually enjoy, you have consistent energy to keep truck, truck, trucking along until you're exhausted. You sleep and then you re-energize and you repeat it again. Absolutely. All, all, all day long, each of those things. And the, oh, and the defined G center sits there and tells me uh, with a, it's the cross of the vessel of love. So either I hate myself or I love myself. It's one of the two, you know. That oh, was so the G center being defined, I would, uh, you know, my very basic uh, reading of that is your sense of self and your sense of identity is very consistent no matter where we would be. Blocked no matter could, where I yeah. am. No you could, you, could you, you know, you could be in a homeless shelter. You could be in a room full of professors. You would have the same level of self identity, no matter where you are. And literally, you as I get tuned into my strategy and authority, I stop looking for love and direction, essentially. Mm. And I'm because I never was designed really for to have a defined G center. Open G centers are there to be open to the right love and direction. Me in my whole life, uh, all I ever did was smash into something, and then suddenly it provided a love and a direction. I didn't know if that was right for me, you know. I, I couldn't tell until some time went by. It was a thing, um, and 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 the truth is, I didn't listen to my responder voice over and over again. I had responses that said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh," and I didn't listen to it. Ah, that's something you worked on as you went by. But speaking of consistency, that same thing goes into your throat. So the way you speak, the way you articulate is pre- and your tone is consistent Right. when you right. speak. That is Def- your defined throat. Yeah, defined throat. Is exactly. You and I both have that. So, you know, it's your turn to talk type thing. That's okay. You know, it's okay yeah. with the, the defined throat. People aren't worried about what they're going to say. We're not really open to it. We're already saying or not because mm-hmm. we've been, it's been defined our whole life. And then, then there's that split. There's that split. Gate 23 is my only connecting gate. The gate on the top of the throat center that's pointing at the gate 43, which is at the bottom of the green Ajna center. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's a split. I don't have a gate 23. That's the gate of explanation. Gate 43 is a gate of insight and breakthrough. And it's really hungry and always desirous to make a breakthrough. Mm. A, a cognitive, mental, conceptual breakthrough of, aha, I got it. And it's doing that with the confusion of the channel above it and the doubt of the gate 63 in the head center. So gout, doubt and confusion lead to realization and breakthrough. And then suddenly I want to spit it out. And guess what? No 23. I've had to learn my whole life to wait for the right timing so that my responder is spitting out my words. Because I would always try and take advantage of the manifesting component and make it happen. And I have no gate 23. The explanations weren't there. The, the concepts were there. If someone could have been inside my head, they could have translated that for me, but I just couldn't get it out into words right, or I couldn't impact the other with the explanation. It just, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't being that metamorphic 23 that's taking the noise of uh, 43 and turning it into something that can be articulated. So I'm going to skip to the head real quick and you're, so when I look at a defined head, right, first off that it's not very common to have your head defined it's it's a minority thing to have 40 percent of us have it right so about, yeah. busy 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 minds <laughs> don't turn off minds but yep. also the ideas <clears throat> that come out of those minds are original like one of the things that i heard ross say is if you have an undefined head you've never thought an original thought in your life <laughs> It's the originality of the thoughts on what's important. It's the following your strategy and authority and recognizing mm-hmm. as a generator, I'll speak for myself as a generator. Yeah. Are these thoughts causing me turmoil? Is there something worth going through? But if I had an open head center, it's like, oh, these are all pouring through. None of the matter. Ah, none but then how does that differ because you have it defined? They all matter, but none they of them matter, matter, and they all matter. In other mm-hmm. words, I can toil over any and all of them, and it's fun for me to allow them all to come through. What happens, what goes wrong with me is when I give myself a hard time because I can't enact it, no gate 23. So uh, don't think that every realization you have, you get to spit out, kid. Don't think they're all going to do something with all of them. They're fanciful realizations coming from your bright-minded you know, personality that's yeah. taking in everything. You can't help it. So 
don't plan on turning it off. Don't try to turn it off. Let it go to work constantly, 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 mm -hmm. and use the voices that God gave you. I have three voices sitting in here, gate 12, gate 20, gate 16, and, and allow them to be. Mm -hmm. And then you know? we go into your Ajna being defined. So Ajna is the center that's constantly looking for certainty, for answers, and things and like that concepts and conducting measurements and being um a fanciful little playground a toy box for children to go discover the next new thing come up with a new idea develop opinions reach for the details that flesh out the opinions and get the insights and the breakthroughs out into the world to create the abstract beauty that is becomes logical in a system that empowers others you know i'm keep going around the the gates when i was doing that i was, in, I was keynoting them different ways and mm -hmm. and, and so it's a toy box. It's there to measure, literally, quite literally. Measurement is its primary thing. Concepts are measurements of this and that. They're mm -hmm. juxtapositions of this and that, or the mm -hmm. original concepts where they're there's still a juxtaposition somewhere. You know, there's still a measurement going on, mm -hmm. putting this with that. And so concepts are opinions, they're ideas, they're insights, they're breakthroughs, they're all kinds of things. And they're mm -hmm. pressured by the head center. And because I have steady, the certainty of the Ajna is not the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I speak in a voice that sounds of a certain amount of certainty. If I if I don't have ah, it, interesting. I, right. And so I can't help that. Mm -hmm. it's, not my, it's not my fault. And so people are like, well, you don't know. It's like, no, I know. It doesn't mean I'm right. I just uh, uh, that's your personal certainty, right? It's my own personal uh, certainty and it's subject to change. It's subject to change. It's just a fanciful Ajna center. That's not even technically part of the rest of the inner body. And in, in, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? It's just it's out. It's a beautiful awareness that they're measuring all the fanciful things it can measure. Mm. Now, you this know. is now, unless there's something, is there anything more you wanted to look at as for gates and channels in your body nope. graph? No. Nope. So the other idea I had was how do you determine after looking at your body graph where your profiles are coming from? Like I know you're a two four, well, but on how the can right you hand just look? On the right hand side when you see ten and fifteen dot two. Ah the dot two okay. is the two and forty six and twenty five point four is the mm -hmm. four. So everything on the right side of the decimal point is the two and the four. Now so is it just, always the same number or can it be different numbers? Well, I want to make sure I'm answering your question right. For different mm. people, it'll be different numbers, obviously, because it's different right. times birth. But for me, these numbers will stay the same my entire life. And it will always be the Sun Earth personality is the first number, two. And right. the Sun Earth design. Notice the Sun Earth on both sides always have the same number. It's because they have to, they're, a polar, they're oppositions to each other. No, that yeah. wasn't quite my question. My question okay. was, so the fact that your, your Sun and your Earth happen to both be the same decimal points that's the same, what I they're mean. in the same line the second line yeah the that, same line hexagon. i don't yep. think that happens all the time though does yes, it? it does yep the sun and the earth are always in the same line you'll never find a chart where the sun and earth are not the same line okay so like yeah 10.2 15.2 so it, it let's say we're 0.4 it would be 0.4 for the sun and the earth yep if it's yeah, if it's point four oh. for one, it's point. It's the fourth line for one. It's the fourth oh, line okay. for the other. Be these guys are again. They're they're in opposition on the wheel. They're opposite sides of the wheel. Mm -hmm. So so the second line on one is the same thing on the other. They're they're exact mirrors of each other. They're opposites. Okay, this is like chart reading hacks. <laughs> yep, chart reading hacks that you can. <laughs> yeah, because usually I would always rely on the thing that says. Blah blah is your profile, but this is like real practice. Yeah, you just like, want to be able to look at a chart and be like, oh, 10 to 15 to 46, 4, 25, 4. This person is a 2, 4 profile. And yeah. then also, as you get to know the incarnation crosses, you're like, oh, 10 and 15, 46, 5. Oh, those are the incarnation. Uh, that's the incarnation cross of the vessel of love. So it's a 2. So the 2, 4, right? Your 2 is your conscious line, which is, that's the part that you identify with. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, I can see that for myself. Yep. And the four is unconscious. So that's more likely to be recognized by people outside of you. And they're like, you know, that you're you like see really social. Time. That you're you see super, over time. And you're like, I'm not social. What are you talking about? Right. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, yeah. depending on that the time. I would hear it all the time. You're so friendly, Dan. <laughs> you're such a good friend. You're all the singing. And they would keynote me with just the word friendly. The fourth lines are designed mm -hmm. to be friendly. 
And, exactly. And I would it's like you're, you're pretty warm, you know, you're yeah, pretty yeah. nice. And you're and like, I, they, but my two, I would just want to be in my shell. <laughs> but whatever they would say to me, I would be like, well, God, I hope I'm not a fake. They think this thing of me. I don't know for sure if I'm not. <laughs> My second line hermit doesn't know what it yeah. is. Yeah, so he, someone described the two four beautifully. It was the introverted extrovert. Yeah, totally. Right. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Because that second line doesn't know what it knows. Sometimes it gets called out to do something it is not ready to do. Yeah, That's and like so, line. like the two, for example. Uh, you know, the reason why they're called introverts or hermits is they are very comfortable being in their own presence that they don't necessarily need to be around others and others naturally notice them they're like you know what you're like really good at that thing like you should come out and do it and they need to be coaxed out to go share their gifts by external circumstances so that's right and that comes the fourth line that that they're completely natural they have no idea that they're good at it they're like nah what are you talking about and it's like no you're like really good at the but it's thing. worse than no idea if we're suddenly <laughs> nervous because we can feel that expectational pressure mm. the second line is a line of projection uh, other people are projecting yes. are basically picking up that i might be good at something and 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 then they create their own expectation inside it's a sort of mm-hmm. step down from the fifth line. The fifth line is straight up projected upon. I think they are good at this and they better be. And I want them to do it for me. For me, it's it's more nuanced. It's like, oh, this cat might be the thing. And, and you know, because it's it's that right angle part of stuff. It's the bottom first three lines of the hexagram. It, it's more um, self-concerned. So they know they have to pull that person a little bit out of a shell. They have to go be nice to them. They have to sort of see them. The fifth line they're they're already wondering because there's a seduction at play the second mm-hmm. line is not the same seduction it can be a little bit seductive but it's only it's accidentally seductive it's not for real um because right. we don't even know uh uh-uh, willie no, right buddy. and then i was going to explain about the fourth line so the you know i got familiar with the fourth line for my not only for myself but <laughs> my whole family's line fours and yep. i don't know how that happened but uh fours are naturally people people <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're people, people, and they're that person who knows a person for everything. So we'd be like, you know what? I think I'm looking for a plumber. It's like, oh, I know someone. Hold up. Let me. They're the Rolodex people. They always right. have a person for a person and they have a wide network. However, interesting nuance. They might have a very wide network of lots of people being able to do all the things, but the people that they truly trust and are their inner circle is very few people Mm -hmm. yep yep the number goes down is the more you need to trust them it's absolutely true because uh, we don't know but we don't we're just not willing to let anybody go easily and that's Mm -hmm. because fourth lines act like the glue it's the only spot in the hexagram that truly is the changing line because think of what happens on the two four um it goes from right angle profiles and it's the only gate it's the only line that then steps into the left angle profile and then finally transits into the juxtaposition profile and then finally transitions out into the um into the left angle profile i know that i'm speaking greek to most people i'm just saying it the three and the four end up being this changing place very much so and the fourth is always trying to externalize that change, that changing place. And so it doesn't want to give anybody up. And it has these attributes like it'll abdicate and give up a little bit. And people sometimes think it's a pushover. It has too many people, people and it's pleasing. Yeah. And, and and when there's too much people pleasing, too much going on, they suddenly get people fatigue. It's just mm-hmm. fatigue. That's a mm-hmm. it's it's sort of what shows up in it, and it's a it's what they need to look at. It's just they they get fatigued. Okay. People overall, because this this creative way of the fourth line, the creative way of the second line, this mm-hmm. absolute creative mix is um is is uh, harmony. Basically, the second line just wants things to to be harmonious, and and the creative way of the of the fourth line is aloneness. So it's a real juxtaposition because Uh, in one sense they're always networking it's a friendly networker because the fourth line is concerned with becoming influential we just want Mm. to be influential hey i found the thing i'm going to tell my whole network now everybody knows yeah that's how we're trying to externalize the next new thing we are the great externalizers 
And in that we become the glue because we abdicate on one end, we externalize on another, and we're concerned with keeping our network together so we can befriend people and ultimately be influential with them some way, somehow, some shape, or they become influential with us and we become influential together. It doesn't matter the combination, you know, mm -hmm. we don't care how that goes together. You know, we're part right. we're, we're, polydextrous with all of that and right. so but then your line two comes in and it's like okay it says, you've had uh -uh. enough people uh -uh. you've had uh -uh. enough people you need to go recharge in your cozy home just go you, you <laughs> just need to isolate essentially by and, and basically you start to sidestep others because what ends up happening is the second line just doesn't want the behavioral requirements that are coming in from others doesn't want the coaxing the the cajoling to be a certain way anything it doesn't even matter what it is it's like oh we're, we're, we're gonna eat no we we eat around 5 30 here so oh, turn off to me don't tell me how to be i don't eat at 5 30 or whatever uh, we're not gonna say that because the fourth line is all friendly it's like it's we might even smile and, and go through dinner and not yeah even be it, it's, there it's a accident. real tug of war i would imagine yeah. being it, a two and huge, a four it's a huge like, tug of war these <laughs> profiles are all the tug of war they're all a tug of Speaking war. Speaking of tug of wars, would everyone like to see the tug of war between Danny and I? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, all right, let's see it. We've never done this before, even for ourselves. So this is just as new and shiny to us <laughs> as it is to everyone watching. <laughs> so one thing I want to keynote again, this is me practicing. I feel like a fledgling little bird and you're just like pushing me towards the cliffs. Like, no, no, you can oh. fly. Fly, just just I try. Let you go off. We, we oh, promise. Thank you. So one of the things that I like to tell people when they're looking at two people's charts at the same time is think of people's body graphs. Like I think it was you who told me this. They're like walking puzzle pieces, and we're always looking up to the next person to to kind of be the the slot to make that fill puzzle please complete. The puzzle. Yep. fill in the puzzle so one of the ways we do this is with the centers which is the shapes so if yep. you look at danny and mine there's plenty of places where i'm very open and he's defined so that naturally has a magnetism to bring us together so that's yep. one way and then another way is the channels which is the lines that are going across both of our body graphs so he might i, I have not looked at this very clearly as to if we fill in or do we fill in in each other's hanging gates or things like that but that's a thing that usually bring people together absolutely so so <laughs> we have these two very powerful electromagnetics and the thing is they're very mutative mm -hmm. i would call them amongst the most mutative in the body graph because you have a gate three and i have a gate 60. Where are you looking? This is I'm at the also bottom, the root center. Oh, the root center. So I am still so new to this. I have no idea where the gates are located. So if you see me looking like this, trying to find something, that's usually me squinting, trying to figure out where the hell the gate is that Danny just mentioned. <laughs> so yep. full transparency for everyone. I have no idea when it comes to the gates and channels where they are. So I'm learning with all of you while Danny guides us so gently. So he told us to go look in the root. Okay, so I'm looking at the root. Now where, what was the gate again? You have a gate three coming off the bottom of your open sacral. Right, yeah, I see it. Gate 60 coming up from mm. the top of my open root. Okay, this, yep. This makes a channel of mutation. This is um, powerful because as an electromagnetic, what happens is it doesn't matter that we get stuck as soon as we're able to actually surrender to the fact that we accept whatever the limitation is, we suddenly transcend it. Mm -hmm. And and your gate three comes in and, and gives ordering to it all. Um, and you help suddenly finish as soon as your sacral, Kitty, stay down. As soon as your as soon as your sacral is lit up, because we're let's say in the same aura, mm -hmm. this all starts to come and take fruition, come to fruition. Whereby my sixty is trying to pressure the change of something, and Gate Three is trying to catch that pressure and generate a response that puts things into order. It's mm -hmm. called ordering. And mm -hmm. the gate of, and this channel of mutation is very mutative, and it's very sad when it's not mutative, and it's very happy as soon as it it catches the wave in a pulse and suddenly starts to create something new. 
And then our next okay. electromagnetic is wicked happy about that because you have the 22 and I have the 12. And this is the design of a social being, uh, the channel of openness that is open to the communication and affecting the, everyone else. So for everyone wondering where that is, um, <laughs> look oh. at the solar plexus and, yep. and then the 22 is coming off the solar plexus connecting to the throat, which is where yep. the 12 is. So Danny has the 12, 12 coming yep. down from the throat and I have the 22 coming up. So we meet in the middle and that's what I mean by we are pulling each other because yep. we have hanging <clears throat> gates. Hanging gates means hanging you have part of the channel but not the whole thing yep. so someone else comes to help finish it like the puzzle piece so the puzzle piece of gate 22 comes into my life through you and it fits in like a puzzle to my gate 12 and vice versa mm -hmm. and so suddenly this this emotional channel which is closed or open to its own emotional way because again it's it's individual so it's either in the mood or not when this design is in the mood it knows it can do anything gate 12 in the throat has a voice that says, I know I can if I feel like it. Mm -hmm. I know I can if I'm doing it already. I know I can if I'm in the mood. It's simply, I know I can mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. That's a manifesting notion. That's a manifesting way. Right. That's why it's a manifesting channel. I know I can. It knows it can. And then the 22 has what special properties? The, the 22 is the, is the manifesting fuel of the emotional solar plex center that has the grace to not only listen, but the emotional wave to come to clarity of what it can and can't do. So mm. it's emotionally clear of what it will or not, but it's right. emotionally charged. It's got an emotional charge that fits the purpose of coming to what we want. This channel simply wants, it has a deep want of things. So are you saying we have a deep want to bring human design to people and make it And become accessible? consequential, yeah, and externalize it and become consequential. Because when you put you and I together, we both have um, a fourth line in our, in our profile. Mine's in my design and yours in your personality. That networking, that externalizing cannot wait to externalize. It just wants to externalize. Because I think main, you know, we both, that's one of the things that brought us together. I'm like, more people need access to this information. Absolutely. Like, it, there's, you know, astrology is so out there in comparison to human design. And I mean, yeah. I, it's been around I longer, sure. But, you know, it's life's changing stuff. And I think that's what, that's why we keep coming back. Honestly, yeah, if everyone could please just keep deeply in mind, mm -hmm. not a belief system you're looking at here. Mm -hmm. It's a science, not astrological signs and figures that are hard to interpret per se. These are the genetic, these are the representatives of the ge of ways of the genetic codons that are in our body. It's coded into our body. We're scientifically reading that in a way that you can experiment with it yourself and see that it's always the experiment always repeats itself. You're always able to experiment and see for yourself. So this, each of these gates is a genetic thing in your body causing you to be a certain way. And you mm -hmm. just can't help it. You're not supposed to help it. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. Okay. So what else do we have? <laughs> well, so I want to talk about this binary of ours. This, okay. So every hexagram, right? A hexagram is those six lines of the Chinese I Ching, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> each hexagram has six lines in it. Just like our genome six lines breaks into two groupings of three or three groupings of two um in the groupings of two we get what geneticists refer to as the base pair the intermediate pair the final pair mm -hmm. final pair is the five and six the intermediate pair is the three and the four but the base pair the foundational pair is the one and the two mm -hmm. in human design they act as a foundational pair as well in mm. other words they are they they literally are the foundational two lines of each hexagram they work intrinsically together just like the manny gen is skipping ahead and the regular gen and the pure generator is going level by level the first line is investigating all the aspects and mm -hmm. the second line comes along and it's either just a natural at that or not mm. the first line is saying, i'm building a foundation i'm doing all the hard work and i'm looking at all the, the factors and the second line says, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I notice I'm always open to seeing what no one else is noticing. Mm 
Mm. The first line is digging in the ground, making a foundation. The second line is sitting up in the crow's nest, looking out over things, not knowing what it's looking for until it's like, hey, I see smoke over there. We might want to do something. Ah, you know? <laughs> that would explain our dynamic a lot. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Exactly. And, 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 but and sometimes the first line is like this little freaking second line douchebag isn't doing what's it's just the yes, second line. Like, I what? Have that, had that thought many times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the second line's like, you know, I'm a natural. I, when I get called, I'm, I'm, I'm there. When I'm uh -huh. called, I'm there. Uh -huh. um, and stuff. And there's, and, and it's hard just because, because they can, they can be at odds with each other, but they make the, foundation of what it is to be human we investigate we build and we notice the shit that we didn't think to notice mm. we're either natural at it or we're or we've investigated and become the authority at it mm -hmm. both of them are leading to be the authority on a thing both of them have built an incredible foundation one of them had no idea it was building a foundation one of them did ah okay and the second lines are designed to skip across the tops of all the foundations. And the first lines are designed to like notice the foundations of all the things and build the requisite material that creates a foundation. And it seems like these two are, are meant to be together. They just mm -hmm. have to s surrender to their ways and stuff, you know? Very cool. All right. That was interesting. I don't think I've ever heard about like, you know, how the, the lines play off each other like that. So that's very cool. And then we explained the electromagnetics. And then the, what about our centers? Open centers. Yeah. So together we're eight and one. We have one open center between us when you put our two charts together. Can you identify which the one spleen. it is? One? The spleen. Am I right? Did I say one? We oh, have God, the no, we, no, we have the God. spleen and we have the yeah, ego. Two. I apologize. We have the spleen Sorry. and the ego. Yep, oh. spleen and the ego. So that's seven and two. So mm -hmm. between us, seven centers are, are defined um, and two are open. So together, we. Oh, we have two. We both have completely open egos. Yep. <laughs> We, we absolutely both, have nothing to prove. <laughs> and we both have an open spleen with you have two activations. And one of them is the same one I have, 44. Oh, and, my. Yeah. Yep. And so this, uh, let me see, 44 is on the left side. Yeah, you have a 44 there. I'm looking for your. I have a 44 and a 50. Yeah. Where is, what line is that 44 in? 44 line six, 44 oh, line five. Oh, my, my, my 44, where it is, it's Pluto. That's line, line six, six and five. Line six and line five. Yeah, so. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, just, just like seeing them. So when there's an open ego floating around, this partnership isn't here to prove it's the best. So we will hurt ourselves if we're trying to prove anything. Okay. Essentially. We're just yeah, doing this for fun, folks. <laughs> Well, we can, we know we're doing it to save the world, but we're not, yeah. we're empowered to do that. We're, we don't have to prove we're right. Is the thing. We don't have to prove we're right. We don't have to prove we're the but best. But we're empowered to do it. We're absolutely yeah. empowered to do it. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's what it does. Um, and then this open spleen, we don't have to concern ourselves so much with safety. We'll always be looking at what feels safe, what's not safe, what's safe, what's not safe. We'll always wonder what it is per se, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're always going to be looking at it. So it's up to us to not hold on to bad ideas because we think they're the only safe one we can know mm. that's and so the thing is when there's two open centers there's always a little bit of work to do seven and two there's some work to do all right there's, what's the work <laughs> the work is i may be sitting back with nothing to prove while you're concerning yourself with what's going to keep us safe because mm -hmm. we don't know mm. and so the work to do is coming together with with recognizing that the, or vice versa it could be the other way around um, or the work to do would also be the not self of the open ego comes out and either one of us or both of us. And suddenly we're both trying to prove something and none of us want to admit we're wrong mm. because it, because we weren't proving it if we admit we're wrong or something like that. And so it's work to do. Um, and so the open spleen comes in and says, uh, you know, you need to be spontaneous, just sort of hurry and hang on to this thing. Even if it's not good for you, mm -hmm. hang on to the thing, even if it's not good for you. Mm -hmm. And the ego is like, I don't want to hang on to the thing, but if I let go <laughs> of the thing, I might not be, if I don't hang on to the thing, I might look unworthy. And so ah. you and I each could have different processes going on more easily and wondering what's going on with the other. And it's up to us to not concern ourselves so much with all that stuff. It's just a trust. Hey, we both love human design. We both want this thing to, to happen. We're both going to show up 
on Wednesday nights and do certain things. And it's, it's, we have the knowledge to move mountains. Anybody needing to know mm -hmm. stuff as the more people that show up over time, the more they will see we're, we're human design gurus. I mean, I, I know this stuff inside and out and mm -hmm. I'm willing to share. I got no ego. So I'm always trying to, you know, got nothing to prove, but at the same time, I'm always trying to find out what things worth trying to prove. Mm -hmm. So I am trying to prove human design to people. You know what I mean? Cause it's the right thing to prove. I'm open to it. So mm -hmm. should I try and prove this? Right. Um, and so forth. So, so together, other than recognizing, that's the one thing that we just have to recognize that we have to do. We also have um, two, it looks like we have two, um, a couple of spots where there are uh, compromise. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, compromise. Let me see if I can spot them. Okay, 1949. Yep, I only have the 19 and you have the whole channel. Right. Um, yeah, so, I don't, I, oh, oh, I see them. 6447. Yep, yep, I have the whole channel. So 6447 is interesting. <clears throat> My confusion on things is actually helpful for me, and it's a hindrance to you. Seemingly, seemingly, it's helpful for both of us. Don't you know? That's the real truth. Everything we are is helpful for the other, some way, shape, or form. But it feels like I think a good example of this is all our our sound issues before we come on stream. Mm -hmm. What do you right. mean you can't get the sound to work? It's the most basic thing we need working to go live. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Thank God that it's, it's in now. But um, I know. So, but but still, this this. It can. My confusion is like I'm perfectly happy with being confused. I used to not be at all, and now yeah. when I when I feel all this confusion coming in, I recognize something cool is going to show up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to realize something I need to know. Mm -hmm. I just have to wait. And for you, that can feel like torture. It becomes a compromise. Suddenly, you're stuck compromising <laughs> to my confusion because you just want the realization yeah. part. You just want to break. Yeah, through I'm and just have like. That we just need this working like now. Right. Right. <laughs> Why is this not working? <laughs> and I'm like, no, grasshopper. I confused. I don't know. Something, <laughs> you know. But it doesn't it doesn't mean you don't cut through a thing. And it doesn't mean I have to stay in a confusion zone together. We just I think we found a solution today, right? It's like yeah, let's we, use we did a thing great, you already Moana. have. We you already have this, you know. Yeah. You just have to try again. Yeah, no, we did absolutely wonderful with this. Um, another, so so the 19 and the 49. This is, this 1949 is a channel of synthesis. It, it, you have the whole channel. It's emotional. Yeah. It's it's driving towards the various unions that make the principles and the contracts of like, we'll let you in the tribe. We won't let you in the tribe. We're going to do things this way. This is how we're going to use our resources. Mm -hmm. That's what this channel is doing. And it's for the tribe. I only have yeah. the 19. So I'm just eager to hurry up and find all the resources and put them all together. I don't care what they are. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm just trying to find the resources. I'm trying to, I'm under pressure to do what gate team does and approach the other. And you're more smooth about that. Maybe I'll approach this. Maybe I won't. And so I'm, I'm I, I have to surrender to your pace of approaching a topic, approaching a thing, approaching others. Uh, and I have to surrender to what exactly resources what we do and don't about. have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, but, like, for example, I have a very clear idea of what each episode is going to unfold as. And, right. you know, I described this to Danny. It's like, you know, look at it as a, as a textbook that's building on top of each previous episode. Uh, but I know sometimes Danny's like, no, but I like really want to talk about this other thing. And I'm like, patience, friend. I patience. End up, <laughs> yeah, I never end up really pushing that river. Someday mm -hmm. as a responsive measure, my my generative motor will push something. And it'll be mm -hmm. up to you to recognize what principles are we dealing with here? Right. You know, what is the thing? But mostly I have to just surrender to that. Yeah, it's a comp it's, and they call it a compromise because I think I think I want it this one way, but your life force guarantees you're doing it your way. They're never going to be the same thing. It and can't then, be because you're I was you. Gonna and say, I'm... How is the, also, when you so here's just a funny thing. I was reading a book about manifestors, and they were saying either manifestors can either swimmingly get along with manifesting generators, or they can really butt heads. What are your thoughts on that? Of course, we can butt heads. Um, 
because no, I mean like way worse than the other types together is what I mean. Oh, oh, oh. Um, well, yeah, because of the energy to sustain at butting heads. And then as soon as we start butting yeah. heads, the manifester who can do more head butting doesn't know when enough is enough, and the generator who can go ahead and never stop head butting uh, uh doesn't have a clear picture of what the head butting's for necessarily. And so <laughs> they both infuriate each other and they both have the energy to sustain out of thing because the, the manifestor is amplifying that generative motor. Mm. Yep. And then the generator is amplifying the, the, the not self of getting angry back and starting yeah. to generate a response of, of that back. And it's more than just frustration at that point. So yeah, we, I would say a manifesting generator and a manifestor butting heads is well, you know what? My ex-girlfriend was emotional man manifester mm -hmm. and we butted heads like there was mm -hmm. no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I saw when she amplified my energy, it was like crazy. Mm. Like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. I just, I, just I, I can't tell you these things that would go through me. It was like, you know, oh, that's, see. that's so, I mean, ideally, you know, again, we, we're on the, the, on the side of like, they get along swimmingly. I think we're on that side. Of yeah, like, yeah. We get along swimmingly. Don't get mad at me head. for something, Moan. It'll be up to me to not take it personally and for you to work through whatever that is. I will be frustrated with certain things at times. It's yep. up to me to recognize, just wait, Dan. It's not her. It's you. It's your frustration. It's not her. You know, it's not the other person. It's not your mom. It's not your friend. It's always you. Do, you mm -hmm. know, the mm -hmm. whole thing. You point your finger at someone and there's three fingers pointing back. That's such a wise statement beyond oh, what that's it might so have even brilliant. been. Yeah, way beyond what it may have even been wisdom towards in the first place, because the truth is all that chemistry is inside of us. Mm. The sadness is not because of the other. It's because of us, the anger, the emotions, whatever, all the things that are happening in us. Yeah, I think that that was one of the wisdom uh, that was always said over and over again about, let's say, the uh, emotional way, right? Is whatever the, 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 the default human setting is to attach a reason or a meaning behind those feelings but coming back to it's just the mechanics of my body and it's just chemical and it doesn't mean the things is exactly it it's like this is just a me thing it's not a yeah you know mm. you know this thing made me mad and this thing made me mad and that thing made me mad thing which is what we default want to do so yeah it's it's a, it's a brilliant artist one last oh I, let's hear it yeah 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 you have a gate 10 in an undefined center yes right so that's yep. in the g center okay yep. that's the gate of behavior so so you pretty much know how to behave because this gate pretty of behavior, much well, it's, <laughs> the operative yeah. word pretty much no absolutely it's 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 the behavior was said once um you know if you're standing on the tail of a tiger beware Mm -hmm. Some people were good at playing with the tail of a tiger. They could not get eaten by the tiger and so forth by holding onto its tail. But, you know, holding onto the tail of a tiger, please beware. That's mm -hmm. behavior. If you go into, mm -hmm. so you have a behavior. If you go into a jungle and you're carrying a loud radio with you and making a ton of noise, something's going to find you and eat you. You know, you know to change your behavior. All you're right. around your mom and your mom's aunt and you're at Thanksgiving dinner. You stop dropping all the F-bombs. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Sure. What, what Just you name it. Our behavior is something that's just people without a gate 10 truly have to be open to learning all the various behaviors. And they're apt to have a beha behavior that they're just not certain. Mm -hmm. You end up with a certain amount of certainty over that. And it shows up because yeah. you have a gate 10. And right. it's easily conditioned in whatever environment you're in. So your behavior will get you out of there if it's not the right place. And it'll keep you in there just fine if it is. Mm -hmm. Right? Right place. You're with yeah, the right the, people. The undefined G-Center is like their G identity is fluid. Yeah. And it changes G according to their environment. Mm -hmm. G-Centers are famous for knowing they're in the right place at the right time. Because oh, that is so true. Like, for example, this is if you're context. aware, not, not knowing how to deal becomes partly uh, shows up with these um um compromises. Compromises mm -hmm. are the first thing you go to when you see a relationship being difficult or falling apart. You go to mm -hmm. compromises and you go to the number of centers they do or don't have when they come together. That's compromise. So the last yeah. compromise is this gate ten. That gate ten. So look at I have I have um 
to, to, I have two channels going into gate 10. Yeah. I have the channel of centering, which is uh, 34 to 10. And I have this channel of awakening, which is 10 to 20. You only have the gate 10. Mm -hmm. So your behavior and the things that you would like to see done according to what you're investigating, right? According mm -hmm. to the impact you feel you want to make, it sometimes surrenders and is compromised by my erratic manifesting generator behavior. So my behavior is annoying to you at times. You know, it's, it can be a compromise to you. And it's just, mm -hmm. and it's the mundane for features of, of behavior. It's not it's overall like, behavior. Get those prompts done. What do you yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the thing done. Hurry up and finish with your coffee. Can you please be on time? Would you da, 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 whatever the thing is, pick the thing, do, wh whatever the behavior is mm -hmm. like. Um, and, and you've done a pretty good job of surrendering to certain things. I notice I can just talk along. And when you're sick of hearing me talk, you do interrupt. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's, that's a behavior, but the way that you are, the way that you're going to actually see into yourself, the way you're going to feel in the right place sometimes feels compromised by this integration backbone I have from 34 to 10 to 20, which is all speedy, zippity doo self-centered about me right now. Right. It's, it's self-concern, this, mm -hmm. this, this 34, 10, 20. It's a self-concerned set of gates that create three channels out of three gates. And it, it's, it's self-absorbed with its own self-survival and its own, its own truth in the now. Mm -hmm. Its own right now is really its first concern. And that can be very off-putting to other gate 10s that are mm -hmm. just a hanging gate or a hanging gate. At least as a hanging gate on an open center, it's, it's sort of less conditioning because it's only intermittent that you would notice this. If we're on a defined center, it would constantly be nagging at you that uh, I, am a pain, that I am a pain in the ass in a certain way, which is really just a compromise that you haven't surrendered to. It's not that I'm a pain. It's not that you think I'm a pain. It's that you haven't surrendered to a compromise yet or anything. Interesting. Has. Okay. Right. Oh, that, that's interesting. So, you know, I mean, I, the other, I guess the only other thing I can think of is like, it's nice that we both have the, the right facing arrow yeah uh, for the Inf for the personality side the top right arrow yep. is what i'm referring infinitely to. open infinitely open yep mm -hmm. it's, it's i don't just, know how the others play out with each other well i notice the others um uh are in the opposite direction except for our environment our environments are both left facing mm -hmm. um which is cool i'm a, again we have a foundational environment i have a second line environment um which is marketplaces and you have a first line environment which caves hmm. so then it's the circle that gives it to me in the triangle that is the first tone so you have this um six color which is shores yep mm -hmm. and a tone that's right and the tone which is one which carries it you're right i see that so it's a circle it's just different um yeah so so but our, both of ours are, are facing uh left as it relates to that. So it means we're the busy ones in our environment. We're being observed. We're not necessarily the best observer in our own environments. We're sort of busy in our environments being observed. Mm. Um, so Describe the stream pretty well. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it should. We should be being observed. I like our rightness as well. Our mm -hmm. right facing arrows on that personality side, which are the same, leave us infinitely open and receptive to the not knowing and the recognizing that you and I, whenever two right facing personality arrows come together, if they're aware that they have a design and they're aware to human design, they can simply surrender and recognize they'll infinitely pull stuff out of each other. Oh, that's so nice. It's wicked communion. Let me tell you, it's good oh. stuff. Yeah, we will infinitely pull stuff out of each other, little exciting things that do this and do that. And they're always in the now. Always yeah, in the now. you can't plan for that. It's just you candid can't plan moments. For that. Right. Mm -hmm. These are always right now. See, this so... is why we're doing this live. I think it'd be very different if, you know, it was like a pre recorded thing. It's not yeah. quite the same. In fact, I've only ever done these things live now that I think of it. It's very rare that I ever pre recorded anything. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, a lot of people watch us on the replays, but, um, you know, it, I think it'd be very different if, like, people are interacting and we're interacting with them back and that kind of right. thing. Yeah, that'd right. be that we wicked. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we bid everyone adieu for the night? No, let's bid everyone adieu. I can't really think of 
anything else really I, I like the fact that there's really nothing to prove so that's going to be our challenge as we mm -hmm. think we think we have to prove something mm -hmm. or be better or, than like someone. i think for me right it's it's like the way that the proving thing comes out it's like okay like how many people are live with us how many people are watching our replays you know have we gotten xyz milestone done for the stream and i'm trying to like come back to the those metrics don't matter open ego open right. ego <laughs> well, the, the only metrics that, that really matters is do i feel like being here am i at peace with this does it feel mm -hmm. good I, it I feel always feels good it has yeah. there's not been a time where it has not felt good i feel like yeah. i'm i'm yeah. doing what's the what I feel like this is like universe's calling for me, at least. It's me like too. I'm doing a thing. I'm making uni like human design accessible. It's like super important to me. And we just want to bring it to everyone for nope. it's you know, true. nothing. Right. If it could. <laughs> no, it's like this is all nothing. You can go study this stuff on your own, but it's completely different when you have someone hand holding you right. and not asking anything for a turn we are you know eternally grateful for who is uh, coming on live and people watching our replays please do give us a follow and we will be back next week